morning, Antoinette. Hi, Doctor. I'm so glad you were able to come today. I will be your counselor. My name is Dr. Lei. How are you feeling today? It's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Lei. I'm fine, I guess. I feel good. I'm okay. That's good to hear. So, first things first, here are my documents to prove my credentials and for you to review or go over if you would ever need them. If you've noticed, there is a pack of tissues right here. If you would ever feel the need to use them, please do so. Uh, feel free to excuse yourself whenever you wish, okay? Mm -hmm. So, are you feeling comfortable? Yes, thank you, doctor. So, before we start, can I ask your permission for this session to be audio recorded? I assure you that this will stay between us and the recording would not be released in public. Is that fine with you? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so tell me about your current situation. How have you been for the past few months? Well, my friends are especially concerned about my well-being. They're actually the first ones to persuade me to see a doctor. After that, I went to see a psychologist and she also advised me to see a counselor. You mentioned about your well-being. Yeah, they were concerned about um, the changes happening in my body and during one of the, the visits, I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. And what was your initial reaction? I was shocked and also gravely afraid. To be frank, I knew there was something wrong with me or that I had to talk to someone, but I never realized how serious my situation was. I see. I want to know more about you before your diagnosis. How did you live your life before? Well, my friends usually describe me as a very cheerful and optimistic person. I was always positive in everything I do. Me and my friends, we would always have fun when I'm not at school. Also, dancing is what I've been passionate about, specifically ballet. I love ballet. I have taken several classes since I was very young. However, I've never experienced being taught at a professional school. That's wonderful. Are your parents always supportive of you pursuing this career? Yeah, especially my mother. She was actually an alumna of Ballet Philippines. She was the one who introduced me to the art, and I will be forever grateful for that. In a way, she's like my personal ballet trainer, but sometimes it's just too much, you know? Too much? Yeah. Why do you say so? She was a prima ballerina herself, and she had high expectations of me. She wants me to be like her, always the top of the ballet classes, and the one who was always picked for plays. She was on to me 24-7. She trained me like a beast. It seems like your mother is really serious about ballet. Yes, of course. I was supposed to be a second version of her, you see. Why do you say so? Well, since she was a prima ballerina herself, um, she had very high expectations for me. She wants me to be like her. Um, always the top of the ballet classes and the one who was always picked for plays. She was on to me 24-7. She trained me like a beast. It seems like your mother is really serious about ballet. Yeah, of course. I, um, I was supposed to be a second version of her, you see. I see. And do you think that you are? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if I want to pursue ballet as a professional career. Um, I wanted to explore different things. I feel as if it's her dream she wants me to fulfill. You said that you have other things that you want to do. Yeah, I am interested in ballet, yeah. But over time, I have other things I'm interested in. I've really become interested in seeing sceneries and beautiful places. I also like the thought of capturing a moment and how it would stay like that forever. I guess I have developed an interest in photography. But as for now, I'm still pursuing this career since ballet was my first love. Okay, I see your point. Since you mentioned that you can seem to give up ballet, may I ask how you're doing in your ballet career? Actually, months before I found out that I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, I stopped attending ballet classes. Oh, can I ask what happened? There was this prestigious audition for dances being held for those who were interested in joining elite companies that turns amateurs into professionals. It was one of those companies that trained students to become future ballerina prodigies. My mother was very happy about this, so she decided that I would train 24-7 just to get my audition routine perfect. I wasn't so surprised about this. 
But since I wanted to continue this career, I decided to go with what my mother had in mind. It was really hard for me at that time, considering I also attend ballet classes at school. Okay, I see. You prepared for the audition the hard way, just as your mother wanted you to. Yeah, it was very tiring physically. That must have been very hard for you. So what happened next? As my mother planned, I trained for weeks before the audition. She became more and more strict and that was when I really felt pressured the most. When the audition came, I was really nervous about performing the routine. When it was my turn, I really tried my best to look confident and to show the judges that I deserved to be there. So I performed the routine with poise and I executed every move the best way I could. I see that you must have felt mixed emotions over this audition since it would determine the fate of your ballet career. Definitely, it was like bittersweet. I was excited and cheerful at the same time, but I felt nervous and anxious the most. And that was until we all gathered the hall to hear the evaluation of the judges. What happened? When I was cold, I was told to stand in front of the crowd, in front of the judges. And my mother was there too. The judges didn't show much emotion until one of them told me that I was a horrible dancer and that I don't take care of my body. It hurts when I think about it. They told me that I could have passed this audition only if I had great body proportion. The other judges agreed and even said that my body wasn't fit for ballet. And this was done in front of a large group of people? Yeah, which made it much more embarrassing and uncomfortable for me. At that time, I really felt useless, especially because my mom was there. I was such a disappointment to her. How did you handle the situation? Well, the ride home was just silence. My mom kept telling me it was okay, even if her face didn't quite show it. But I couldn't stop telling her, telling myself that I was a failure because that was what I was. I kept on replaying the situation in my head. And I kept telling myself, I could have made it if only I was skinny, if only I didn't eat so much. So your mom was okay with it in the end? Yeah, she seemed like it. I guess she knows how hard I trained for it and that I really did my best. But it was still hard for me to move on from that experience, you know. I still feel like a failure every time I remember what happened. How did you cope? Well, after the incident, I really took eating seriously. At first, I lessened the amount of food on my plate, but every time I looked at myself in the mirror, there was no change. There was still fat. I was still not good enough. When did you start feeling this way? Around five months ago, I think. I was so obsessed with everything related to my body. I weighed myself every day. I measured my entire figure. I spent an average of 30 minutes every morning just looking at my fats in the mirror. I didn't realize it then that I was significantly underweight, but for me, I was so fat. Or at least, that's what the mirror shows me. Shows you? Yeah, whenever I looked at the mirror, regardless of my true weight, I looked fat. I had a lumpy stomach, and my arms looked huge and flabby. My legs could have passed for a Christmas hat. I just looked really plump. Are you still experiencing this? To be honest, yes. Sometimes. But at least now I know. Well, that's good, Antoinette. You mentioned before that your mom is really supportive of you and that she remained positive even after what happened at the audition. How is your relationship now? Well, we're okay, I guess. I can sense some mixed feelings there. Well, everything can't simply be black and white, can it? Yes, that's right. To be honest, after the incident, even if she told me that it was okay, I could sense that she was disappointed in me. That somehow, she agreed with what the judge had said. She told me nothing but kind words, but after everything, she was the one who pushed me to the most to lose weight. She made me exercise every week and try new dieting methods every time. And the more she made me do it, the more I felt like I was really fat. And that I really dragged myself. That really dragged my self-esteem down, but I couldn't say anything to her, I just want to make her proud. You, you knew that she was pressuring you, but you didn't say anything because you didn't want to hurt your feelings. And in the end, this contributed to you developing the disorder? 
definitely there was so much stress given to me and I was conflicted on that time on what to do because I love my mom very much. If only I had the strength to tell her what I really wanted. I see. And what do you really want? I want to stop ballet as a professional career. Maybe I just want it as a hobby. I want to explore new things, find out what other things I'm good at. But what does your heart tell you? Right now, I really want to be a nature photographer. That's good to hear. I think that you'll be a really great nature photographer. Do you have anything in mind that can help you tell your mom? Um, I can talk to her and just tell her, I guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. But I don't really have the courage to tell her. Why do you say so? I just really don't want to disappoint her. You can always give it a try. You just have to speak out the truth and what your heart really wants, what you really want. It's just, maybe there are other ways to let her know. I can maybe show her that I have the skills to be a great photographer and that I'm really passionate about it. That's great to hear, Antoinette. Also, recently I've been getting so much positivity from my friends. I was in a slump before I was diagnosed, but they've been really helpful to me. I can say I've been getting most of my strength from my friends. I see. So, you see your friends as a source of hope? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to hang around with them more often. Before, I was excusing myself from other people, and that contributed to me developing my disorder. I'm going to avoid that now. I want to surround myself with more positivity. That's a really great insight, Antoinette. So, how about your view on yourself? I guess it's just more about disciplining myself right now. Disciplining? Yeah, now that I look at it, I think I'm going to have to start avoiding mirrors from now on. I have to focus less on how my body looks and what other people might say about me. Even now, whenever I look at mirrors, I still see myself as a stout girl. But the difference is now that I know. I know that mirrors are wrong and I think I am beautiful. My These are all wonderful ideas, Antoinette. Do you think you'd be able to fulfill your plans? I believe so. So, you're going to pursue being a nature photographer and you are going to talk to your mom about it. You're also going to spend more time with your friends to surround yourself with optimism. And starting today, you're going to avoid looking at yourself in the mirror and start eating healthy instead. I will, yeah. And I wouldn't force myself into trying things that I'm not ready for. I will try to start anew by taking things slow and doing the things that I really want. If it takes an hour every day to remind myself of my body proportions do not limit and define me, I'd do it. If it would take spending time with my friends to make me feel like that I'm more than just a number, then I'd do it. If starting new requires me to talk and compromise with my mom, I'd do it. I can feel that you're really optimistic about this and that's really great. I think that we've had great progress over this session. Yeah, Dr. Lane, thank you so much. I realized and learned a lot. No problem, Antoinette. I'll be looking forward to seeing you next time. I wish you well. If you would ever need to speak with me again, the door is always open.